so colleagues uh, once again uh, good morning good afternoon in your different positions so this presentation i will be making is on uh, pesticide formulations and application methods as well as equipment used for application of uh, mosquito or vector control products in this presentation i will cover uh, the following topics the a brief introduction of major public health pesticide classes you may already be aware of it but i will just recap types of pesticide formulations packaging labeling uh, products that are pre qualified by who and pesticide application methods and their rationale which includes as as uh, dr hamuda said Spray spraying, IRS, larviciding, aircraft disinfection, and pesticide application equipment, and WHO specifications of the same, and safe disposal of pesticide waste and management of use containers, and then a little bit on the pre-qualification process and uh, about pest control by private entities. WHO has recommended several interventions for vector control. So I'm talking of interventions, not the product. And these interventions or applications of products include, as you know, LLIN, IRS, larvicide, indoor, outdoor, space spring, repellents applied on human skin, but also uh, rodenticides, molluscicides, of which you are not usually in contact uh, for application purposes, or uh, insecticides used in aircraft disinfection and of course uh, vector con pest control or household pesticide pest control uh, agents this slide summarizes major pesticide classes of vector control products based on insecticides so if you if i just may uh, narrate then organochlorine there is only one product that is ddt for irs and that too restricted in now few countries. India is the largest single most producer, but then a couple of countries in the African region use DDT. Then we have organophosphates, which are primarily used both for, for IRS, space spraying, and larviciding. Pyrethroids are of course the most widest used, both in IR, uh, all in IRS, LLIN, IT in treatment, conventional treatment actually, space spraying, Use, use in repellents and even aircraft disinfection. New nicotinoids is a new class that was introduced uh, some three years ago by a global malaria program for control of malaria vectors. So right now we have a product used for IRS, but also it has been, there is another active gradient which has been used in a space spray formulation, one or two space spray formulations. So, Neonicotinoids are used in two applications. Pyrrole chlorphenapyr is used in L LLIN. And then there is a product uh, called Fluopyridifuron, which is under evaluation, is meant for space spring and is, a, is in a very advanced stage of evaluation. And then there are other products. I mean, you can read it. This is just a list. And then these are possible applications or the applications that have been so far uh, used in, in different activities. At the end of this slide, I okay. So, so in the bottom row, I have just added up uh, the number of uh, applications uh, of a different type uh, using different compounds. And then, of course, this, you know, this PBO is currently used one in a long lasting net and two in a, in a particular space spray product. In terms of the pesticide formulation types, uh, these are the types of formulations. Uh, one is the wettable powder. You are, you may be already using this wettable powder, so maybe well aware of, of how, what wettable powder is. Wettable powder employs at least three elements. One is the active ingredient. Second is the wetting agent because usually many of these compounds or insecticides do not mix in water. And in order to bind them with water, you need a binder which is called a wetting agent. So wetting agent is added. 
and many a times people may add manufacturers may add adjuvants or other formulant products so vegetable powder usually is is most of the material is inert material and the active ingredient may be small quantity depending upon the type of formulation emulsifier concentrate once again contains active ingredients plus a emulsifying agent and maybe sometimes a diluent or any other uh, formulant that is required to to mix this product into water suspension concentrate once again same thing but in this case this is they employ a specific technology so the active ingredient suspends into usually usually water and uh, uh, when mixed with water this becomes uh, just like milk or a colloidal form so the active ingredient is in a state of colloidal form and and is actually not just a mixture and uh, uh, when when mixed with water then of course they may have some settling property so you can look at these three pictures when you immediately mix a vegetable powder or any other insecticide then this will be the first uh, picture which will look like colloidal form after a couple of hours it may be like this the second picture and after a few days it can be like this where the supernatant is the just the solvent or water and then the active ingredient has actually settled down at the bottom and in this case therefore when you receive a bottle of a suspension concentrate then one has to really mix it well the the original container to bring it to this form and then start using it otherwise what will happen is that you will in the first one or two applications you will just use water and then in this few last applications you will use a highly concentrated insecticide so therefore when you receive liquid formulations it is important that uh, these are mixed well before use the fourth type of uh, uh, formulation is a suspension concentrate enhanced with a polymer and there is a product uh, uh, called dentamethrin scpe or or pyr uh, uh, one particular product manufactured by uh, bear called uh, polyjon suspension concentrate is added with a polymer quantity with polymer is a plastic so this plastic comes in a very liquid form and when you mix with the suspension concentrate and apply on the wall then the insecticide is applied and there is a very thin layer of plastic over it so what will happen that on the inner side the plastic will protect the insecticide from uh, degradation by the alkalinity or acidity of the soil or wall uh, and from outside it will prevent from usual withering due to temperature heat or smoke or whatever so suspension concentrate with a polymer enhancing actually increases the longevity or residuality of the insecticide and therefore compared with uh, suspension concentrate alone the scpe formulation is much more longer lasting so for example about 6 months for the polyjon or kaothrin formulation using pe of uh, yes sir to bear the other formulation are granules and you may have used a lot of granules in different situations both in irs and larvae siding granules are solid materials as granule materials and these granules once again may have some binder so when these granules are applied in water they may settle down at the bottom of the uh, the habitat where you apply so whether it is a tank or a aquatic habitat outdoor and then after this they settle down at the bottom they start slowly disintegrating and when the granule disintegrates then you know, it releases the insecticide into water so depending upon how fast the granule disintegrate will provide the, the residuality of the insecticide so it can be used in irs but also in larvae siding many formulations with wg come for larvae siding form larvae siding purpose. now the these uh, solid formulations may come just like granules or powder but then when they pa are packaged in water soluble bags just like tea bags tea bags of course are is not water soluble because tea bag uh, only tea is filtered out but in case of water soluble bag 
this comes with insecticide and when you dip this back into water then everything gets dis disintegrated and get mixed with the water so this is called a water soluble bag formulation and this is the most preferred formulation among all because this obviates the need of exposure of the operator directly with the uh, with the insecticide and then obviates the need for measuring or weighing uh, the insecticide to be applied or to be put into the sprayer tank so this is a safer and user friendly option and must be preferred over other formulations as far as possible although this may be slightly costlier because packaging of individual bag would add slightly to the cost of the procurement and then capsule suspension formulation actually is a formulation in which the insecticide is packaged into micro capsules very fine capsule just like the medicine we take the medicine capsules are of course visible from naked naked eyes but the cs formulation capsules are very minute they can be seen seen under a microscope but they the capsule suspend the, this these capsules in cs formulation uh, break slowly so when you mix it with water and apply on wall not all capsules are in a breaking form they they will be breaking slowly slowly over a period of time and that will provide extended residuality on the okay so in terms of formulations then of course we are it is it is very important that uh, the particulate size in the formulation is is important because uh, the size will determine Uh, whether the suspensibility is high or low then of course suspension additives as i said before will also ensure that these liquid formulations are in suspended form viscosity and other characteristics of these of formulations are are important i will uh, give more detail about this little later in the presentation uh, <clears throat> then as i said that the formulations may be in a plastic uh, aluminum packaging like this is an example of ddt 75% which is a, an aluminum foil bag and then of course this is the label on top of it but then this is the water soluble bag on right hand side this looks like plastic uh, inside are the granules but when you put this bag into water then uh, Uh, everything gets mixed with water and then that that can be used for various uh, purposes both for larvae siding or irs depending upon what type of uh, bag is available and and sold by the manufacturers little bit telling you about the wh specifications of insecticides particularly the quality control parameter so first of all this is the manual which is a wh fao manual on development of uh, specifications of pesticides for agriculture and public health pest control the public health web trend pest control and more importantly although this manual gives very details about each and every formulation you can think of and that are marketed for agriculture use or for public health use but primarily uh, these are the parameters of quick interest one is the active ingredient every formulation that is sold on the market will have an active ingredients so when you buy it you would be interested to know what is the identity <coughs> and the content of uh, uh, active ingredient into the formulation the second element of specification is the relevant impurities there are two impurities relevant impurities and non relevant impurities so for example every formulation may have a trace of water just because the formula and process may introduce some water vapors so those impurities may be non relevant impurities because this water will just dry up or you basically you will add water for application purpose so non water can be a non relevant impurity or there may be other impurities that are uh, like wetting agent or additives that are not toxic which are deliberately added and therefore they are non relevant impurities because they are not re relevant in terms of the human safety but then there are relevant impurities because these impurities may be toxic elements into that formulation so when the manufacturer produces the insecticide the manufacturing process may introduce some toxicants 
undesired toxicants so we we would be interested to know what is the percentage of those undesired toxicants and whether the manufacturer has told you or they know how to detect those those toxicants or impurities because if you if you does not they do not tell you about how to detect those toxicants then when the product comes to you how would you know whether the toxicant is present or not so who specification specifically requires that if there are relevant impurities in a particular formulation the manufacturer also discloses the Uh, the procedures for detecting those relevant impurities into the specification document and specification documents are published by who pq in case of vector control products so if you go through the specification document then you know what are the constituents of the formulation and if there are any relevant impurities how to detect those and what is the method to be used so the chemical laboratories in each country or in, in different countries doing qc testing no the processes for for detecting uh, how much impurity was present actually in the product supplied as against the specification by who the formulations will also have many physical properties so it it will uh, disclose the ph sieve test dry sieve test means when you sieve a product then how much is uh, is left in the sieve suspensibility in case i just gave the example with the three bottles persistent foam which is when you mix a insecticide with water then how long the foam will remain because this will impact the the application of insecticide in sprayer tanks if there is more foam which comes out of the tank body then it is not a good idea wettability how soon it can be added with water and becomes wet in, uh, wet and then there is a wet sieve test probability spontaneity spontaneity of dispersion so these are several um, different formulations for for solid and liquid uh, specifications for different solid and liquid formulations and then temperature storage stability is very very important right because when you buy a product and keep it in store then we would like to know at what temperature it will still remain good to be applied uh, for the purpose for which it has been purchased so temperature storage stability as part of wh specification is actually 54 degrees for 14 days we subject the formulation that is 54 degrees for 14 days is a really high temperature and then if this product sustains the the specification then it is good so that is how wh fa specifications are are developed in terms of different insecticides or formulations pre qualified for who then this is a list for the irs products and uh, in, in this particular table i have given the names of the formulations the type of classes organochlorine phosphates carbamate pyrethroid neonicotinoids and the dosage is recommended by hoops and more recently for new products uh, the, those are shown in red color the gram FT active ingredient per square meter dose to be applied uh, for the purpose of irs on on surfaces the modes of actions and the recommended duration of effectiveness of the product on walls in in, in actually in nature of uh, field settings so this is a comprehensive table since this presentation will be shared with you you can quickly refer this table but otherwise you can also go to the pre qualification website where they probably most likely Uh, would also uh, put up this table or a similar table uh, on the website because we have provided them basic information uh, for for summary presentation of these uh, recommendations on the pq website then this is the list of wh pre qualified long lasting insecticidal nets and many of these nets you you might you might have already used for malaria control purposes so these nets are basically for Malaria. Sorry, your presentation is not. Uh, we are still in the sector side. Really? List of long lasting not. Yeah, list of long lasting not not to view it here. Oh, but so let me stop and reload it. Just give me a second. Let me just share this screen. I'm sorry that. <laughs> sorry. Hmm.
Can you see now? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, you have to view. No, I mean, the, can you see this slide? WHO pre qualified L Alliance? Yes. Uh, it's the mine. View? Okay. No, no, not here. Oh. Yes, we can see. Ah. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Rajpal, we can see it all right, no problem at all from this side, this end. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just. Yeah. Now it's okay. Is it, is it all right now? Yes. Okay, thank you, Professor Ali, and thank you for confirmation. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, these are WHO pre qualified long lasting insecticidal nets, and actually, on the middle column gives the active ingredients of different types. So, Basically, it includes pyrethroids, but at least this particular net contains a pyrrol compound called chlorphenafil. And then this particular net, uh, Royal Guard, contains pyriproxifen, which is a, a you know, uh, slow acting insecticide. So, and then of course, a couple of nets have PBO, PBO story you already know. So, these are different types of uh, nets. And then uh, some, <coughs> excuse me, some nets are polyester nets which is using coating technology. Some are polyester plus polyethylene nets and some are polyethylene alone the nets. So these are different type of fabric that have been used. And then, uh, yeah, I think that this slide, uh, uh, there is some error because this, this probably is a copy paste error. I will correct this slide later after my presentation and we'll send to Dr. Samira. These are also polyethylene nets, not polypropylene nets. So this is a copy. I will correct this slide and and I'm sorry for this mistake. Okay. Except okay. for uh, life net, which is polypropylene, all other are polyethylene and not propylene where it is written like that. And then <clears throat> these are the insecticides that were recommended by Hoopes for treatment of mosquito nets through conventional treatment method. So a couple of those are still there. Uh, although uh, nobody these days in program mode treats nets on site, but this recommendation is still stay and can be used if somebody wants to treat the nets uh, at, at their own level. Icon Max was recommended, this particular product as a long lasting treatment, but nobody bought this product for long and therefore company decided not to market it, but, but there is a recommendation on that. Then these are WHO pre-qualified products for space spraying. And uh, there are not many, but the most important one I wanted to bring to your notice, the new edition of which is called CLOUL. Sure. Yellow UL is a ultra low volume formulation. This is just a new uh, new recommendation. It contains a new nicotinoid called imidacloprid and a pyrethroid called pralethrin. And then these are the indoor outdoor application doses. So this is the new addition. Otherwise, these are uh, these were already Hoopas recommended uh, products. So you can uh, read them at your leisure. And in particular, I wanted to briefly tell you that uh, for the purpose of dengue control, space spraying is recommended and not for malaria as Jenny just said in the previous presentation that uh, space spraying is not recommended for malaria control, but it is strongly recommended for uh, control of uh, Aedes bone or dengue, uh, uh, for control of dengue outbreaks. And uh, as this uh, specific, specific bullet says that it is recommended only in case of emergencies to suppress an ongoing epidemic or to prevent an incipient outbreak of an Aedes born disease because it space spraying will massively or rapidly destruct the infective adult mosquito population and will contain the epidemic quickly. So this is a, an emergency measure and not to be used for, for routine purposes. And uh, <clears throat> Second point is that outdoor and indoor both fogging uh, processes have been recommended, but outdoor fogging has very limited or no value in control of disease because outdoor fogging is not uh, very effective in, in making contact uh, with the insects because this is open space and through air or through 
uh, where is perfusis mosquitoes can 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 really ex escape the the insecticide and the penetration of the the outdoor fogging is not as good as it is with indoor uh, fogging so therefore indoor fogging using a handheld operator uh, operating machine is is very effective compared with outdoor fogging although uh, who recommendation is there uh, with regard to the outdoor fogging also and as i said that uh, when indoor fogging uh, is applied every 2 to 3 days for the first two weeks uh, of the start of uh, epidemic it becomes very effective and then to sustain contain containment of the epidemic then uh, it can be continued for another four weeks so indoor fogging applied every 2 to 3 days in the first two weeks and then continued every week for another four weeks will bring down the uh, the epidemic quickly because because fogging is a short lived intervention it may be maximum effective for half an hour or so so therefore you have to repeat this intervention uh, so initially twice a week and then every week for four weeks would th these repeated applications will then ensure the the rapid destruction of the infective population of mosquitoes and then when you contain the epidemic rapidly by space spraying then of course this will allow the program managers to think and apply other vector control measures to sustain because you cannot sustain for for weeks and months space spraying so you have to uh, really switch out to some interventions after the, your immediate purpose of containment of epidemic has been uh, served the other method is perifocal spraying against aedes species this method was applied uh, historically uh, for aedes control and uh, more recently in cuba in 2017 it is not exactly very recent but still about 13 years ago 13 14 years that uh, treatment of uh, of water containers kept outside the house or maybe within the house compounds are treated with a low dose of insecticide from outer surface and this is because when aedes most Mosquitoes they come, they first sit on the container, <clears throat> then they try to enter into it to lay eggs. So that is the time when when they sit on the outer surface of the container, they get exposed, and that is how uh, this technology works. It is not really practiced uh, extensively, but this is one such method. At least it was used in Cuba in two thousand and seven. And then outdoor residual spraying is another method which is under testing. in which case uh, some manufacturers are testing insecticides by applying them in verandas or outer surfaces of the houses instead of applying them uh, uh, inside so it is opposite of irs so when outdoor application is made then mosquitoes entering into the house come in to contact and, and then then they they are killed so this is the technology which is for example bayer is is testing uh, delta methane for ors but some other products may also be tested in local settings this table provides a summary of the mosquito larvae sites and several of them have been pre qualified by who were were originally recommended by hoppers and then they have been pre qualified also by the new system except for one product which is for which i believe the specification is still not yet available because of some technical reasons but otherwise many of these compounds um, formulations are available for larvae siding and then these are the classes of uh, those formulations that these formulation belong to most importantly actually in this uh, group i would like to bring to your notice this particular product called pyrifloxacin uh, 2mr this one this is a disc and uh, and this is a disc formulation so um, i think in my presentation i have put up another slide i will show it little later uh, and will explain about the value of this particular formulation because this is meant for control of aedes mosquitoes in containers because this is a plastic disc which is which is incorporated with pyrifloxacin and this is a slow release formulation so from the plastic disc placed in the water container pyrifloxacin will uh, diffuse slowly over a period of 6 to 12 months and will contain the breeding of uh, aedes mosquitoes in container so this is a new addition uh, of course not very new we still 3 4 years old but this is an excellent formulation for contain containment of aedes mosquitoes 
other alternative formulation we can call spinogens spinozad uh, tablet and spinozad uh, extended release double layer tablet so these are the also new new compounds so new formulations uh, that can be also considered for uh, larviciding and then of course the top 3 or two yeah top 3 are the bacterial larvicides the bti based formulations bti the third one actually this one is a bti and bs mixer formulation it has also recommended several insecticides for application in drinking water so there is a department in who that deals with the guidelines for drinking water quality and uh, you can see that from this particular book you i have provided a web link here you can download this book and if you go to table 8.19 then this gives the table of, of different insecticides that are meant for application in drinking water and have been found safe and are recommended for application in specific situations for containment of mosquito larvae in containers so many times we receive questions as to which insecticides are recommended for application in drinking water and here is the document and here is the table that you can refer to then we have in 2018 published a document called equipment for vector control this is a specification guideline that that gives specifications for each uh, each equipment recommended by who and the purpose of this guideline is to standardize development of specifications of major pesticide application equipment and to assist national authorities in selecting a high quality equipment for vector control purposes so this guideline gives details about different type of applications for uh, larviciding space spraying irs or uh, any other product uh, types there is also a recent publication on personal protective equipment this is a fao who guideline so this guideline basically is meant for both agriculture and public health vector control and uh, this guideline basically gives details about uh, uh, the the type of uh, uh, equipment that are essential when you apply insecticide so for example this includes details about cotton cotton or all gloves boots uh, goggles hats face mask even the uh, n95 mask uh, where control flow valves with with irs equipment are not used so what is cfv i will of course explain in 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 the later slide but basically this guideline uh, is a personal protective equipment guideline and is very 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 valuable addition to our list of guidelines coming now slowly to the pesticide application equipment uh, you are more familiar with hand compression sprays for irs and larviciding application so for example this one this is a, a hand compression sprayer this is manufactured by expert but as i put up this disclaimer at the bottom of the slide that mention of this specific product is doesn't doesn't mean a who's endorsement so this is just an example that there is a hand compression sprayer that is used for application of irs and larviciding products and then there are motorized mist blowers for uh, larval treatments this mist blower of a particular company is used in many countries for larviciding applications in water bodies which are large size and need deeper penetration because this is a motorized applicator so this throws the the water droplets at a longer distance and it is very good equipment for application of larviciding where the vegetation is there and and uh, and it is more than 3 meter apart uh, where where you need to apply this insecticide so different kind of hand compression sprayers have been uh, tested and recommended by by who and just i have put a few examples so this is a micron expert gloria and uh, this is ike super ike super one is a plastic uh, body uh, uh, sprayer others are steel made and there are six seven others and uh, the important point uh, here i would like to mention is that this compression sprayer come with a control flow valve this particular red and equipment this small piece this is meant to regulate 
the release of water or the suspension from the tank uh, on a constant flow basis. So from the first minute to the last minute, same amount of insecticide will be delivered or discharged from the tank. And this would therefore ensure a high quality of uh, application. Some of you might have attended our MRO WHO training courses on IRS in Morocco two, two years back, but maybe we will have more opportunities in future because IRS uh, training course itself is a five days course. But just to briefly tell that, that I think Samir will also share a, a, a video presentation with you later. So these equipments are uh, ideally, ideally good uh, equipment for application of IRS products. I just explain in, in detail, but basically this control flow valve is added at the uh, at the end of the sprayer lance, like this one. And then once you pressurize the tank, then uh, this releases uh, the, the discharge at a constant rate. And this is a little more detail. So this is the control flow valve, and then of course the nozzle body, and then the actual nozzle, which is here. Now nozzles are of different type. Some nozzles are of, of plastic make, some steel make, but this particular picture that there's a plastic body outside, but inside is a ceramic nozzle. So by putting a ceramic nozzle increases the persistence or, or longevity of the nozzle. And therefore we recommend that uh, high quality, either hardened steel nozzles are used uh, or preferably uh, ceramic nozzles are used because ceramic nozzles are much more longer lasting than plastic or normally uh, steel body uh, uh, nozzles. And uh, <clears throat> this is just a table. So that gives that when uh, a tank has a 1.5 bar control flow valve, and if you use the WH specification 8002E nozzle, if you load the tank of, of the sprayer 7.5 liter uh, liquid, then the flow rate will be 550 plus minus 10 milliliter per square meter. You apply 30 milliliter liquid per square meter, and you can cover with one tank load to 150 square meter area. This is just an example. If you don't use a control flow valve in this case, then you need little more water. Your flow rate will increase because it will throw more water, both in terms of minutes and as in terms of surface. And you can cover lesser area with the same amount of liquid. So of course, you will have to adjust the quantity of insecticide accordingly. So these are, of course, quick tips. But otherwise, this is a part of a longer discussion and longer training for Different types of nozzles are available in the market. And you can see that uh, the, the, there are there are at least four colors that I displayed here. But among them, this is the red one is the one which we use. And if some company uses a different color, then insist on buying only a 1.5 bar uh, control flow valve. Because this is what we need. 1.5 bar control flow valve is a pressure me measurement of the flow. So when you pressurize the tank and, and release uh, water from this uh, sprayer, then at the tip of the nozzle, this is the pressure that will only maintain and not more than that or less. So this will ensure constant flow of liquid through this nozzle. We can use other nozzles, but then they are meant for agriculture purpose and therefore their discharge rates will be much higher. And therefore for, for purpose of IRS, or vector control, we only use 1.5 bar nozzles. This is a picture that shows the different type of applications. So if you do not use a control flow valve, uh, then there will always be runoff from the surfaces like this. So, so much of liquid has been applied that it is running down the wall. In this case, it is also, also run down. But if you use a control flow valve, then the treatment will be much more uniform on the wall. It is the same wall, but look at the difference between this and this. And then more recently, some other experimentations are, are being done where, we are, uh, where <coughs> we are trying to improve the application of insecticide using some laser uh, guided devices. 
so that uh, you, so that you can the spray operator can maintain distance between the wall and the nozzle at a constant level so lots of innovations are occurring and i think in future uh, we will have some better devices there can be several errors while you apply insecticide on walls so for example speed of lens can be one parameter if you move the hand too fast then it can apply uh, too much and if you if i mean too low quantity on the wall if you apply if you move the hand slowly then it will apply too much insecticide in in the same area so this is a problem so that is why it requires uh, usually training of the spray operators operators at the beginning of uh, year of spray cycle so that the spray operators are uh, are aware of the the processes required other sources of error in application of insecticides can, can be dip, dripping from the equipment uh, of the liquid and this drip can not only contaminate the hand of the operator or the floor of the house but will also actually uh, uh, waste the spray liquid because this there will be wastes so poor maintenance of the sprayer is the major cause sometimes the nozzle is blocked through some debris or poor quality stitches used in water soluble bags or sometimes the it is not properly tightened so the loose fitting can leak the spray the parts of the uh, spray equipment so it is very important that to reduce the errors in application of insecticide not just for irs but for even larvae siding uh, or spray spraying we, these equipment are properly maintained uh, periodically i already showed the example of uh, backpack motorized space uh, mist blowers uh, <clears throat> for larval treatment but these are other examples of the same type of uh, different type of uh, knapsack motorized space uh, larval side applicators and uh, these are these examples would be found in the who equipment guideline that i just uh, showed you previously so this particular uh, uses is, is for larvae siding or larval treatment and then the there are different applicators for space spraying so this is a hand the left side, top is the handheld thermal fogger so this operator is holding it in hand and then you apply fog usually this is done for buildings or houses indoors and not for outdoor then there can be cold foggers also cold foggers can also be used for application of insecticide uh, both indoor and outdoor but then there are truck or vehicle mounted uh, foggers so you might have seen already so this is a vehicle mounted fogger and this is a vehicle mounted thermal fogger in which case the insecticides are applied in outdoor open areas in the streets basically outside of the houses so that the flying insects in the open areas are knocked down and this is therefore the fogging is effective but of course the 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 effectiveness of this fogging will depend on the speed of the vehicle flow of air time of the day because temperature inversions will be very important in holding the the fog closer to the ground if the temperature is too high the fog will dissipate very quickly up on the sky and if it is too cold then it will remain separate suspended for hours on the ground and it may not be really safe for this type of applications for the people and the cattle and the animals pet animals particularly so therefore spray timing uh, space spray timing is very important and type of equipment and application is also equally important cold fogging does not use thermal devices whereas thermal fogging requires a heating device in which case usually a diluent diesel or kerosene oil may be used uh, to apply the insecticide so <coughs> this type of uh, applications are actually toxic in in the environment as against the ultra low volume fogging in which case the the solvent is not used uh, and therefore uv applications are preferred over uh, thermal applications which require uh, application with kerosene or diesel oil i have already showed you uh, that some i think only this this is the new example in here okay now going further into the aspect of pesticide management uh, this is today's topic is not for management but i just will, would like to bring one issue which is here that 
when insecticides are stored for long and not used for the purpose, then they become obsolete because they have outlived their self life and then they become obsolete. Or many times, uh, a poor quality insecticide procured from a manufacturer when brought to your stores and found uh, useless, then this becomes obsolete because you cannot apply that insecticide uh, for the vector control purpose. So this, this will also be discarded and will stay in the store as an obsolete insecticide. And then of course, uh, you store them in your go down or in, in your place, open, in open or in closed situations. And then when many times uh, empty bottles are, are also stored in public health offices, like this picture shows, and this becomes a major public health problem. So in order not to allow insecticides to become obsolete, first of all, buy a high quality insecticide, which is quality assured according to the WHO specification. Do not buy it from, uh, uh, from sources that are not authorized. Buy the quantity of insecticide that you can use within the self life. So many times uh, uh, when you buy a product, the self life is only six months later and then you are not able to use it. So insist that a product is, is supplied to you that contains a longer period of self lives because usually self life is two years. So let's say three, four month old product and be purchased and you can buy, still use it in the next 18 months or so. So you can avoid the obsolete insecticide. Then if you are not able to use it in a particular location of the country, it is important that they are moved to other areas of the country so that they, they are used in time within the self-life period. Self-life is a very important aspect and I just like to give you a little idea of what is self-life. So usually WHO sets a self-life of two years from the date of release of the product. It is very important to note down date of release because the release is the manufacturing and release are two different things. When you manufacture a, an insecticide, let's say you, you manufacture in January, 2021, but you are not able to uh, package it and send it uh, to, the, to the buyer until let's say June 2021. So manufacturers actually uh, uh, put up a date of release. This is the date when actual packaging is released out of the factory. And that is the date when the manufacturer will do a quality control analysis of the sample and will give you a certificate of analysis that on the date of release, this is the quantity of active ingredient in the product. And then now it is good for next two years. So from the date of release, the packaging is, is, uh, is released and then it will uh, remain. So idea is that once uh, this product is brought and to your stores, then without opening it or keeping it under optimum storage containers in a designated storage facility, this product must be good for two years. That is the period of, of the self life. Now, because of some reason, as I explained before, if the product becomes obsolete because you could not use it, so it, it is a date expired product. In that case, you can ask the manufacturer to, you can, you can send a small sample to the original manufacturer to get a new certificate of analysis. And that certificate of analysis will be actually a certificate that will tell that as of the reanalyzing date, this product is still good in terms of the specification of the, of the product and therefore can be further used for a period of one more year or six months, depending upon what the manufacturer advises you. And in that situation, then you can still reuse or you still continue using the same product after recertification, rather than making it an obsolete pesticide after the expiry of the two years of self life. So <clears throat> this is the, the story of the self life. And then of course, each product uh, bought will contain a material uh, safety sheet. Material safety data sheet actually contains all information about the manufacturer, constituents. Uh, the, in case of there is an emergency, there is a uh, uh, poisoning due to that in application of that insecticide or adverse effect due to insecticide. 
then gives this this gives an emergency hotline telephone number so for example in this particular seat it gives that okay this is indian emergency number this is global emergency number because this is the example i took from a supply bear made for for our one of our trial in india so that's why it even gives the local country's number and then of course the international number <coughs> number You have many uh, remaining five minutes. I think that should be enough. Okay. Fine. So, so then safe storage and transportation of insecticide is also important, and you can read more details about these uh, these issues using this link. And of course, when when you want to dispose of the an obsolete uh, insecticide, then there are there are FAO guidelines available uh, on how to. Uh, uh, to 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 make inventory of the uh, obsolete insecticide how do you manage containers that are used containers and even in case soil is contaminated at the storage site then how do you remediate the soil and so you can use these documents using this link which is which i have provided in this slide okay then i also like to brief you about who recommended classification of pesticides by hazard so this document is available using this link and is it gives details about how do we classify different classes of insecticide by categories so these are risk categories or hazard categories so this may include extremely hazardous highly hazardous moderately hazardous slightly hazardous or unlikely to present any acute hazard most of our public health insecticides are uh, in class 3 or u 3 and u these two last two classes but ddt may be considered as hazardous by this criteria but but there are there are safety issues with that so uh, every insecticide that you buy for weft control will come with a hazard class and you can now refer this document and and read it uh, in for more details <coughs> so telling you more about uh, pesticide label because each container of insecticide will contain a pesticide label and so label <coughs> can be Uh, three panel like this is three panel label it can be two panel or one pa panel label this is a label which will be stuck around the the container of the, of the bottle or many times can be supplied along with the container be if the label is too big it cannot be printed around the bottle then it can be supplied as a separate uh, leaflet and this gives uh, details about the insecticide uh, formulation inside and will tell you what is the purpose where <clears throat> where and when and how it can be used who is allowed allow to use this pesticide what are the mitigation for hazards or or toxications and therefore it is an important tool to protect human health and environment while applying insecticides in agriculture and public health so you can read more about it using this link below and then the label uh, on the container will ca contain several type of pictograms which we have standardized both with who or fao and you can read more about these pictograms into the document that i have just referred then quickly tell you three four slides about the who pre qualification product who has uh, introduced uh, new normative standard processes which jenny just explained to you so i will not give more in detail but basically the idea is that the pre qualification of vector control products is is being now processed through a, a new system and that new system is like this that when man, manufacturers or developers supply uh, submit an application to who then we have a pre submission coordination committee of gmp ntd and pq and we will see if the product qualifies to be uh, having a policy recommendation then this goes through the standard pre pre qualification process before it is pre qualified but if there is no policy recommendations with regard to the public health value of the product then it goes through a rigorous vector control advisory group process in which details of efficacy safety and quality of products are evaluated before a product is pre qualified for the intended purpose several new compounds are under evaluation so only those that are starred are the ones in which case we have already pre qualified one or two products but several other products are under evaluation by the vector control advisory group of who for making recommendations of the products for public health 
And I, I already explained to you that new new space spray products included CLO and a new mixture of flow pyridoquinone with transfluorine. So industry is working on uh, combination formulations. And I was referring to <coughs> this particular uh, disc about uh, this is similar to MR disc, which is incorporated with pyroxyphon to be used as a larvicide. But of course, recently WHO has pre-qualified sumicil, fluidora fusion. Intercept G2, Royal Guard, and similar to MR as new uh, insecticides for public health or vector control. Now, who can deliver pest control or vector control services? This is a slide I put up on request by Dr. Samira. That in case you know that for vector control, uh, national malaria control programs are the bodies that decide on vector control products. But many times, you, NGOs also apply. Uh, these products uh, supported by some donor. And of course, pesticide manufacturers, they like crop life or agriculture, agro care, provide stewards support. And then for the purpose of pest control, of course, pest control operators are responsible. We have a new guideline on licensing of public health pest control operators. Using this web link, you can download this document and see how to certify pest control operators in your own country. But basically, pest control services are contracted by institutions and agencies, hotels, restaurants, etc. And then, of course, PCOs require licensing from the country of use so that they are they use good quality insecticide and proper uh, uses using appropriate equipment. So that was the last slide. Thank you so much. In case you have any questions, I will be happy to 